let me first by start by saying that you know I'm a big big believer in, in immigration reform and we need to Congress needs to address this issue you know as a first generation American no one is more sympathetic to the plight of children that were brought here throughout any fault of their own um, so that is something that Congress needs to address that being said, as the Attorney General, my job is to enforce Arizona law as it is. Um, Arizona voters, a um, decade ago, passed Proposition 300 by 70%, um, nearly or about a million votes that said that they did not want in-state tuition to be provided to folks uh, that didn't have lawful status here. Mm -hmm. That's the law. Um, there's also federal laws that have implications for us as a state and how we charge tuition and what we can and what we can't charge um, based on federal law. So it, it put me, quite frankly, in a very difficult position um, because on the one hand, you have a very sympathetic group of folks. I, I agree that we should be doing everything we can to make education affordable and accessible to as many people as we can. I understand that. Um, but I also have to deal with the realities of the laws here in Arizona. And based on not only the law, but the fact that our office won a decision at the Court of Appeals, we had to proceed accordingly. So you were moving forward with a lawsuit to stop uh, uh, the Board of Regents, the schools, from charging in-state tuition or allowing these so-called DACA recipients, or these so-called DREAMers and DACA recipients from uh, getting the benefit of, an in, of paying in-state tuition, correct? What we did, we filed a lawsuit on Friday mm -hmm. that basically said this is part of a bigger and broader question about accessibility in education here in Arizona. Mm -hmm. So what we did is if we, we initiated a lawsuit against the Board of Regents basically saying that not only do they have to follow the statute to the DACA recipients, but our Constitution mandates and requires that education be nearly as free as possible. Mm -hmm. So as we started looking at our options, what we could or maybe should or shouldn't do um, regarding Proposition 300 and DACA recipients, um, I kept coming back to this fundamental question. I kept hearing folks talking about we need to make education accessible. I heard you know, the presidents of the university talking about the founding of our state and how they wanted everyone to be educated. I thought, that's all true, mm -hmm. but why is everyone focusing on one group of people and not focusing on the broader constitutional question? What are or what is the Board of Regents doing to make education nearly as free as possible? And when we started looking at that question, I had our folks looking at it, I started realizing that tuition here in Arizona has risen nine to 10 times faster over the last 15 years than the rate of inflation. Um, what has happened, even since I went to Arizona State University, Dennis, when I went to ASU, tuition I think was 600 or 625 a mm -hmm. semester, and now it's, it's gone through the roof. It's more than $10,000. So, you know, as a middle class parent with kids ready to go to college, I keep coming back to the basic question, are we doing everything we can to follow the Constitution and our state law when it comes to making education nearly as free as possible. Yeah, and saw that in the lawsuit that you were charging, that some of the numbers that you put in there are pretty incredible. It's over 320, I think, to 370 percent increases in tuition um, over the past uh, number of, of years there. So how are you, what do you want to remedy this? How, you know, how moving forward, what would you like to see happen at the end of the day? Well, I think the, uh, the Board of Regents has a policy when they consider how they um, calculate tuition. It's not based on actual cost. Um, it's not even based on making something nearly as free as possible. Once again, they keep coming back to this formula about accessibility, and there's really three primary factors they use. They look at what, one, the cost at other universities is. They, two, they look at the availability of loans and other student aid. And three, they look at family median income. And to me, you look at those three things, that leaves out a huge portion. It doesn't go back to that first principle out what is nearly as free as possible. So I want, I think the Board of Regents, if they want to, or the university presidents want to lecture us or anyone else in the state about, hey, we need to make education accessible, I couldn't agree more. But I, what I want to tell the universities and the Board of Regents is, okay, are you truly making it accessible? And if so, how do you account for these skyrocketing costs? How do you account for the skyrocketing tuition over the last 15 years? Do you, do you think the, uh, the presidents are being hypocritical on this issue then? Oh, absolutely. I think what you have is a, um, a bunch of ivory tower eggheads that make these decisions and they don't they realize the impact that it has on everyday hard work in Arizona taxpayers. And so this, this stuff doesn't happen in a bubble. And we, over the last decade or so, our tuition here at our state universities has risen faster than any other state. I mean, so those, those, are, those are fundamental questions we need to start asking is, you know, with that basic constitutional provision, are we making education nearly as free as possible? Um, the issue of accessibility, as the, as the presidents have talked about, once you go to that question, then you have to ask yourself, well, why should we, or why as a, as a parent, should the amount of loans my kid gets factor into how much they pay for tuition? Quite frankly, I think you can make an argument that that's what's led to some of these skyrocketing costs. 
So with this lawsuit, do you want the presidents and the universities to start cutting tuition, or what do you want? What, what's Absolutely. Like? I, I, I think one, one is we hear about how much the university says it has to charge or what it needs to charge. My basic question is, well, what is the actual cost? And that's one thing. We keep hearing from the Board of Regents and from other people about what the tuition should or shouldn't be. But if you look at their own factors, their own criteria for setting that tuition, Dennis, it's, like I said, they look at other universities. Well, what does the University of Michigan charge? What does the University of Alabama charge? Both with way better football teams than mm -hmm. my alma mater, ASU, I will add. Um, they, 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 look, they look at things like family income. They look at the availability of, of student loans, student aid. And my, 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 my question is, well, why are you looking at all that stuff instead of looking at what are the actual costs? What are the expenses? What, what is ASU spending all this money on? Um, if you look at our pleadings, we actually have a chart in there, which I, once again, I had our folks doing research. And if you look at, in the last 15 years, there is a almost a, a, a fairly straight line, slight increases in tuition before that. But in the last 15 years, it goes almost straight up. So what we have seen is we've seen a dramatic spike, a dramatic spike in the, the amount of tuition parents are having to pay here and, and I will add, it's not only parents, it's, you know, there's a lot of folks that are returning to school. So there's been a dramatic spike in tuition with no correlation to the rate of inflation. And quite frankly, it doesn't even correlate to the legislative cuts. Well, have you talked to the, uh, the ABOR, have you talked to the university presidents and asked them to, to justify these, rate, uh, these tuition increases? Well, th this is the thing. As, as we started to move forward on this case, we'd sent the um, Board of Regents a, a letter last month asking them to explain what they were doing in regards to tuition for the DACA recipients. And as part of that letter, they had talked about the fact that they wanted to make sure that um, education was accessible, and you know, and we and as the months, two months, a few months here have led on since our victory at the Court of Appeals, I've heard the presidents talk a lot about accessibility. I've heard the university presidents. There was, there was a column or article just this week in in the newspaper uh, with the university presidents talking about what the purpose of the founders of our state was in the Constitution. And, and I kept coming back to this principle is that they're lecturing us or they're telling us that they know best. They know which laws are going to apply to them or not, and they know what the Constitution means or not. And so by filing this lawsuit, what we want to see happen is we want to see the universities, the Board of Regents, put their cards on the table and explain how they are coming up with these numbers and how they come up with this, this notion of affordability. When affordability is not the constitutional standard. The, the constitutional standard is nearly as free as possible. Are they meeting that standard? The courts will decide. Yeah, and I guess a lot of people watching this tonight, uh, people, you know, uh, parents out there getting ready to send their kids to school, uh, who's going to wonder at the end of the day uh, what this might mean for them. What would something like this mean for them? You know, because from what I'm hearing is this lawsuit is just like, look, tell us what, how, what to justify these costs. But is there any? Are you, are you going after any kind of remedies here? Is your office seeking to force them to, to lower tuition rates or anything like that? What I think we need to do is we need to see the actual numbers and facts and figures. Mm -hmm. And we want the universities, the Board of Regents, to not base their tuition on what's being charged at the University of Michigan or how, many, how much someone can get in student loans. That shouldn't be the proper criteria. So, so we do want them to change their criteria. And two, I think we, as taxpaying citizens in Arizona, have a right to know how much the actual costs are at the universities and what their expenses are. And, you know, and, and if they want to talk about you know, needing more money or, you know, increasing tuition, but I think they need to justify that by showing, well, here's what we're spending the money on, and here's why that doesn't meet our needs, and we need to raise tuition. Because just from a, just from a you know, outsider's perspective, when I hear the university presidents of the Board of Regents talk about accessibility and um, making it affordable, um, I ask myself, well, wait a minute, why is it then we've taken this dramatic spike? And I think anybody that's lived here in Arizona long enough, you know, I went to high school here, went to ASU as an undergraduate, um, I keep hearing the same thing from a lot of you know, my friends from people like, you know, on my daughter's sports teams, they keep coming back to, oh my goodness, do you see how expensive ASU is now? And so I think that um, mm -hmm. there's been a dramatic increase and there needs to be an explanation for that. Uh, also, I want to get uh, back real quick to the DACA uh, recipients there. What's going to, what, what do you want to happen or do you think this is going to, uh, you know, sort itself out over the next six well, months? Well, I think that, once again, the university has to operate consistent within the law. And so my my question is, is there's a, there's a, law, there's a statute on the books that was approved by 70% of the Arizona voters, it was just upheld by our Court of Appeals, and why isn't the university following what the law requires? Um, and two, I think there's, there's a secondary question. If you read the concurring opinion in that case, uh, Judge Norris points out that there's actually federal statutes that say that if, if you aren't in compliance or you're, you're allowing this sort of bifurcated or the same 
um, amount of tuition that you could run into a situation where it's a conflict with federal law and then you'd actually have to charge everyone the same amount of tuition or that out-of-state tuition. You couldn't charge them that you know, discounted rate of in-state tuition. So what the Board of Regents are doing, once again, is they're gambling with uh, making tuition not only affordable but nearly as free as possible by jeopardizing the ability of the universities to charge in-state tuition by their reckless actions. All right. Well, thanks a lot for uh, joining us here today. And, Thank uh, you. Yeah, big news. Thank you.